Part of this work is really useful for documenting breeding pairs because obviously we're marking pups and putting transmitters in them so uh, we can use that to, to meet the criteria of whether or not a pack constitutes a breeding pair which is based on pup survival. Because pups are growing so fast it's really hard to actually put a radio collar on them and have that collar stay on the animal. I mean pups are always chewing on each other, always playing. And so what we're trying to do is to put a, an implant in surgically in the abdomen so that it stays there permanently, but it gives us a way to have a transmitter available in a pup to both monitor his survival and his activity patterns in a very unobtrusive way. That's a serious challenge, is just finding the dens and getting somebody to the site, plus all the logistics involved in you know, taking 10 people out in the woods and having a whole surgical center <laughs> essentially set up next to a wolf den. I can't duplicate what would happen in a veterinary clinic, but I still want to make this surgical setting as sterile as what we can, as clean as what we can. The surgical team started getting their stuff together and the rest of the crew, the processors, and Michael and I headed in. Right off the bat, I saw a wolf. That was kind of when I knew that we probably had a den site there. So then Michael and I took off trying to locate the den. And we just spent a lot of time being really quiet. And because Lacey and I have a lot of experience reading wolf sign, we knew when we were getting farther from it and we knew when we were getting closer to it. We got to a place where we were seeing really good sign and trails and I called the rest of the crew to come help me secure the den site. We heard the pups kind of making their little noises and we saw them right outside of the den. We directed a few people to go up above the den and a couple of us went below. And we just kind of surrounded the den and closed in so that the pups would go down into the hole. The den itself was really challenging to work in. It was really large inside and the hole was really tiny. I was pretty much at the total extension of my catch pole trying to get these pups in the noose. It was a really tight den and she could just barely get the catch pole up to the top and she'd pull pups out. And while I'd go in with another catch pole in the other entrance and I'd pull them all the way out of the den. Want Steph to run this one? Okay, I'm gonna have Lauren run this one, okay? Okay. Initially when I went in there and I took a count, I counted six pups, and then I got done with the sixth pup and I took another look around and there was another pup that was just plastered to the side of the wall, just not moving at all. And so we actually ended up getting seven pups out of that den. We went in and uh, got the pups out of the den and then ran them back up to the surgery station. The gas anesthesia is the safest way to anesthetize them because literally in a couple breaths they'll go under anesthesia and in a couple breaths without gas they wake up. It was very easy to induce them with that. They just went right to sleep. I just monitored their heart rate to make sure it was staying normal and their breathing rate to make sure it was staying normal. It's not a very invasive surgery at all. It's less than what we'd even do for a spay surgery, which happens all the times in our dogs. It was just a very small incision, about an inch long. The doctors did it in under 10 minutes. It was very quick, very easy. It's a very safe anesthesia procedure. It's a very safe surgical procedure. I'm just going to open up the admin with a little keyhole incision and drop the transmitter in. You know, this incision that we're making with these implants is the same incision we make hundreds of times, thousands of times with spays on dogs and cats. Technically, it's something we, we do regularly. So once the pups got done with surgery, they came over to us. We cover their eyes. It creates a less stressful atmosphere for them if they can't see. Animals generally just calm down when they can't see. The first thing we did would be take a biopsy punch of their ear. And uh, we took saliva samples and blood samples when we could. Everything went really smoothly, the surgeries went so fast, we were just able to keep up with our side of processing, just making sure we didn't hold on to the pups for too long, because the longer you're at the den site, the more disturbance you're doing. Walking back through, the sunshine had come out, we were in that aspen trees, carrying that pup. It was a great feeling. Everything had gone well, the team had 
done a great job. Returning that pup to uh, its den and seeing it get up immediately and go right on in with its other litter mates was, was awesome. The releasing uh, of the last pup into the den uh, was probably the most exciting moment of the day. This project is probably the furthest that we have pushed the technological envelope as far as the application of veterinary medicine to a wildlife project. So it's just, it, it's, and it's not cutting edge, it's been done before, but for us this is a first time and it's, it, it, it's really cool. These implants are going to give us a better understanding of wolf pup survival, help us meet our federal delisting requirements, give us a better understanding of wolf population dynamics and harvest rates, thereby improving our ability to manage wolves in Idaho.